Hello everybody, my name is Gattis Kandis and today I will show you how to very simply calculate how far is a mountain if you uh, move just one step closer. You know, that that's all you have to do. You move one step closer and the mountain could be 50 or 100 miles far away as long as you're still able to see it and you can simply calculate how far it is and also how high it is. So without further ado, let me demonstrate. I'm gonna draw a little picture first. Okay, so there I drew a right angle triangle, which is gonna help us to figure out how far is the mountain. So we start here. And so we just step one, we, we just take one step closer to the mountain and then we end up here. And so now we know this distance, I'm gonna call it D. So that one we can measure simply by, you know, if I take one step, let's say if I take one large step, that's gonna be one meter. So that will be uh, very helpful to figure it out. And then I'm, I'm just gonna call this uh, A, so that's the height of the mountain is going to be a and then the distance from the starting point all the way to the base of the mountain is going to be b and then this one is going to be c also known as hypotenuse in a right angle triangle so and then we also will need a couple more angles uh, this angle let's call it uh, epsilon and then this angle let's call it uh, Phi, those are all Greek uh, letters uh, often used to, for angles of a triangle. Okay, so we're gonna start in this position and then after we, you know, walk towards the mountain, let's say one meter, then we're gonna end up here. And so we will want to know how far is the top of the mountain. And so that's gonna be this line here. We're just gonna call it N letter n and then as i said the height of the mountain is a and then of course we are able to measure the angle alpha and we are also able to measure the angle beta especially if we have very high precision instrument you know it, you know to measure the angle it's it's pretty simple you know you, you just uh, you just need something to go along the horizon and then the other thing you know going up pointing towards the top of the mountain and then this angle here which is in between here it's very easy to measure if you have a good measuring device so and if we have this good measuring device then we are able to simply measure alpha and we also able to measure beta and then uh, distance we can measure as i said is going to be one meter you know to simplify i'm going to write down what we got we got uh, the d which is distance which is going to be one step to make it simple we got uh, we get the angle alpha and we got the uh, angle beta so only from uh, these three uh, values we're able to calculate the size of the mountain the, you know the height and the distance to the mountain that's pretty incredible. Then of course we want uh, A, which is the height of the mountain. And we want N, which is going to be distance to the mountain top from, from this point. To calculate those values, we can use very simple tri trigonometry functions. And there's gonna be two of them. We're gonna use a sine. Sine equals uh, opposite. Uh, opposite side divided by uh, hypotenuse. So sine of an angle, uh, for example, if we're talking about alpha, sine of the angle equals opposite side, the, which is A, divide, divided by hypotenuse, which is C. You know, that's ju just an example. And then the other formula we're going to need is cosine, which is, which I'm going to write here. Cosine equals adjacent side so adjacent again divided by hypotenuse so that, that's it we're just gonna need these two simple formulas to calculate uh, mountain size and distance 
Okay, we're gonna start with calculating uh, this one, E. We will not need E, but we will need to proceed. So that's the first step. Because we need E, we know the angle and we know the hypotenuse of this little triangle. Then we can easily calculate it. So we're gonna use this uh, formula. So sine of alpha, yeah, so it will be sine of alpha equals opposite side, which is E, uh, divided by hypotenuse, which is D. So, and from this formula, we can calculate E very simply, E equals D times uh, sine of alpha. So this is beautiful. We already know now E using the values that we already have. That lets us proceed. And so now we are able to simply calculate the N from uh, this triangle here. So as you can see, N is hypotenuse. And then we already know E and we have angle phi. And because this time angle is touching the side, so we're going to use the other function, cosine, because it's adjacent side. So we'll use that. So cosine of phi, so here we go. Cosine of phi equals adjacent side, which is E, divided by hypotenuse, which is N. And that's the one we want, N. And then from this, uh, from this formula, we can calculate N very simply, like so. N equals E divided by cosine of phi. Okay, so we already have E. And I hear you ask, well, what about cosine of phi? Like, what is phi? Well, phi is very simple to uh, figure out. As you can see here, phi equals 180 degrees minus beta minus epsilon. Because, you know, whatever is on a straight line is 180 degrees in total. So let's, let's write it down here. Phi equals... 180 degrees minus beta minus epsilon. And I hear you ask, but what about epsilon? What is epsilon? Good question. Epsilon is actually, as you can see from this triangle, is 90 degrees because that's the sum of the remaining two angles in a right angle triangle. So, 90 degrees minus alpha. We know alpha minus alpha. So now we just put these two formulas together and then phi equals, so 180 minus 90, that's 90 degrees, 90 degrees um, minus uh, beta, beta is still there. And so now minus epsilon, we already used the 90 degrees, and so alpha is gonna become plus, you know, because minus and minus becomes plus. So now we're gonna say plus alpha. Okay, so now we have uh, psi. Psi equals 90 degrees minus beta plus alpha. Another way to check it is, so this angle says it is uh, 90 degrees minus beta plus alpha. As you can see from this uh, picture, beta is slightly bigger than alpha, you know, because as you get closer to the mountain, the angle becomes bigger. So now if you subtract slightly bigger value than what you add, then the, the remaining value is going to be slightly less than 90 degrees, which makes sense in this, uh, this uh, scenario. Because, you know, this is right angle triangle and then this angle is, is going to be slightly smaller than 90 degrees. So that's just a nice confirmation. So now when we have got Psi and now when we have got uh, E, we can make one beautiful formula for the N because N is what we're looking for. We want to know how far is the mountain top from where we are. So now we can uh, combine the formulas. N 
n equals, so instead of e, we're going to use d, uh, d times sine of alpha divided by cosine of this value, uh, divided by cosine of phi, so now we're going to use this, cosine of uh, 90 degrees minus beta plus alpha and that's the result now we have answer to the distance to the mountain top uh, using the values that we know we know the d we know the alpha and we know the beta so th th this is beautiful and then last but not least we can just also calculate the a which is the height of the mountain and for height of the mountain again we're gonna use the sine formula because we we know beta and we know hypotenuse so that's very simple so sine of beta so let, let, let's write it here uh, sine of uh, beta equals opposite side which is a which is what we want uh, divided by hypotenuse which is n and then of course from here we can calculate that the a the height of the mountain equals uh, n times sine of beta and we know the n so we might as well you know make a new formula for the height of the mountain a equals n which is this one d times uh, sine of alpha and times sine of beta times sine of beta divide all that by cosine of 90 degrees minus beta plus alpha and there we go can i use different color so there we go there is our answer to the height. Shall I write it? That's that's the height. Height of the mountain. And then this is our answer to the distance. That's the distance to the mountain. Uh, this time. This times. Okay, so there you go. Very simple. And in fact, if we are using one meter, you know, in our example, then we can actually delete D because, you know, one, when you multiply anything with one, the one disappears, right? So we can actually take it out from here and we can also take it out from here. So we don't need it because if we just using one meter, then we just have to remember. The, this formula is valid only in case uh, we using D as a one meter. And then, of course, the result is going to be in meters. Then the formula becomes even more simple. You know, <clears throat> this is how simple it is. We take one uh, big step, one meter. Then we just use the, the angles. All we're going to use the angles, the alpha, the alpha and the beta, which, were, which we can simply measure with, uh, with the precise devices. And then we get uh, the distance to the mountain. And then we get the height of, uh, to the mountain. So that, that's pretty much it, like, you know, I was, the reason I, I was thinking about it, because I actually, like, saw some mountains, like, recently, and I was thinking, how far are they, you know, and then I started thinking, and I had no idea that, like, you can calculate that uh, very simply, just using these formulas, if you have a very precise measuring, you know, that's measuring the angles. Anyway, that's the lesson for today. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something and I'll speak to you soon.